Thank you. Hey, everyone. So this is my talk here. It's called Beyond the Pale Games for Us by Us. Uh, like she said, I'm Amarana from the University of Central Florida. So first, let's start off with a bit about myself. Um, you might be asking, who is this fetching young rogue? And as you can see from this, uh, this very lifelike portrait up here, um, by the way, little spoiler, my sister, she did the art stuff on the side here. I did that art stuff in the middle. So you can tell who the artist is in the family. It's me. Okay. Um, and I'm a production student at UCF's FIA master's program, which basically means that I am in a building every single day, surrounded by 60 people just like myself, who want nothing more than to create video games all day. We have producers, we have programmers, we have artists, um, and we just get together and we just jam on games. Um, and before that, I studied the intersection of pop culture um, and media at an undisclosed university, which happens to bleed orange and blue. Um, <laughs> And I've been making games since I was in elementary school, and I still do. Um, and I suspect many of you have been making games, even if you don't suspect you have, um, which I'll get into right now. Um, so I put up this uh, picture here of like a cute baby playing video games, because for game developers, that's like our kryptonite. Um, and I'm going to talk about some touchy-feely stuff right now. Um, so games have the ability to change lives, and I think I'm a testament to this. Um, they can do this in many different ways. Uh, physically, socially, and so on. Um, one such example, I was once an uh, awkward, nervous uh, undergraduate uh, at an awesome university, and uh, I, I was kind of a large guy, right? Um, I weighed something around 210 pounds, um, and I was young, so this was dangerous for me. Um, but one day, my brother came home, and he had this, like, big white box, and he's like, hey, man, I got the new Wii Fit U, man. We can, like, surfboard on it, and you can play games on it. It's totally sweet. So I, I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. So I start using this thing, and the software that comes with it, it tracks your weight every single day while you're on here, and it just puts it on a graph. And I had never gotten into the habit of thinking of my health choices in terms of uh, something that I could just measure the same way I would measure uh, how much percent of a game I'd completed or whatever levels I beat or whatever. So every single day, just for five minutes before I'd head off to class, I would record my progress on this graph. And then over time, I would see it go up and down. And then I noticed I was doing certain things in my life. I might be uh, eating late one night. I might not be taking the stairs as much. Uh, I might have decided to be lazy and drive to school instead of like, taking the bus or biking or whatever. And those things were having a huge impact on... Uh, where I would be placing the next day. And more important than just seeing that, uh, the little, like, uh, they have, like, a virtual version of, like, the uh, Wii Fit balance board that talks to you. And this thing would, like, yell at me when I was, like, getting fatter. It's like, hey, man, cut down on the snacks. Um, <laughs> and, and it would encourage me when things were getting, when I was losing weight. So I was like, well, I want to make this thing happy. I don't care about myself. Like, I just want to make that happy. <laughs> so I would just... Every single day, like, my focus was, like, I want to make that virtual board just, like, the happiest virtual board in the universe. And eventually, like, in the span of something like six months, I ended up losing around 40 pounds, um, which is a tremendous uh, transformation for me. And it did so many things. Uh, it boosts your confidence. It makes you look and feel better about yourself. Um, it's great. And that's something that video games did for me in a very, in a very direct fashion. Uh, but also, it was very exciting for me. I still have my little Wii Fit U thingy here, the pedometer. Um, so I haven't given up, uh, cut down. Um, but games also, not just directly, but also th indirectly, they can help change your life. Um, so for example, uh, about two weeks ago at FIA, we had a guest lecturer. Um, his name is Nick. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for something like 14 years. And so he's a developer in Texas, a video game developer. And so we, um, we invited him to come over. And it, he gave a guest lecture, and everyone loved it, and it was awesome. And then afterwards, we had lunch or whatever. And my friends were asking me, he's like, this guy's awesome. Uh, how do you know him? Uh, Where would you guys meet or whatever? And I was like, oh, I just met him online, man. This is cool. Um, and they're like, oh, what were you guys just like? Whatever? I was like, yeah, we used to make like goofy Mario like fan games together. It'd be like the worst MS Paint graphics, just like throw a title screen up there and just like have Mario chase like a cabbage for like the first like 10 levels or something. Um, and we would like bond over this stuff. And I never knew him in person, but over the years, like, I was about 12 years old or something when I first met him, and we just developed a friendship, and eventually, like, I became friends with his brothers, and it was crazy. And people just, I, just, I was just thinking the other day, if I never met this guy, 
If I never played these video games, if I never did that, then I would never have made this connection in the first place and wouldn't have this like, amazing friend that I have now. Um, and, n- and not only that, but video games also have the ability to uh, educate and teach us. In fact, I would say not only do they have the ability to teach us, but by their very design they teach us uh, because video games have rules and limitations and uh, restrictions and all sorts of things around them. And you have to learn how to navigate those if you want to play the games. And this is very valuable because you're, essentially what you're doing, any, every time you open up a new game, you put it in there and you start playing is you start learning immediately. Um, and this can be leveraged in amazing ways. I can't tell you how many people I know who've learned to speak English, for example, just by playing video games because they wanted to seek that entertainment. And on the way, they had to learn certain tools in order to succeed. Um, and like, I know people who play like Japanese RPGs and they'll like, uh, they'll get through certain chapters of the game and they'll like make vocabulary lists based on those chapters and they'll learn while they're playing. And for them, it's not, it's not a task. It's not homework. It's fun and they want to do it. Um, so that's like the amazing, awesome uh, side of games that people love. And then there's something that we tend to associate with games and that's, uh, the scary, three scary letters or one scary letter, depending on how you look at it, uh, triple A. And AAA for video games is not like a company that comes and like tows your car away. It's a, uh, AAA stands for this big multi-million dollar staggering productions that cost like millions and millions of dollars and thousands of people are working on them all across the uh, world. And they're the big blockbuster movies of video games. And those are the things that are dominating the uh, mindscape of people that think about video games. You got your Call of Duties, your Halos and so forth. Um, but AAAs are scary. Uh, back in like the year 2000, uh, when I first met Nick, it cost something between one to two million dollars to make a top-level console game. Now, in I think the, the latest statistics by 2010, the average is something like 20 to 25 million. And if any, and I think Grand Theft Auto V, which came out about a few months ago, that costs like 260 million dollars. So if you think about it, that in that short amount of time, it's gone up so much. And I think. Th- like seven figures is not going to be unheard of in a few years. Uh, so this has just been exploding. Um, not even exploding. It's like a nuclear fusion fission thing going on. It's insane. Um, and there's been a lot of like really strong results of that. You get um, uh, development teams that are ballooning. Thousands and thousands of people working on stuff. But also, uh, but the opposite is happening in terms of the companies and the big uh, corporations because the, th- the ones that fail, they, and there's, Studios failing now. Every it seems like every other week, they just go and they. Uh, it just seems like every other week, another studio is going by the wayside. But then there's also the idea of like just the cost ballooning. So if you have a game and it's a failure and it doesn't sell at market, you can't rebound and start making another one. Your studio is done. You're through, um, and that's really dangerous. And that's one thing where the independent developer comes in because independent developers are people. Uh, like one person or even a small group of people, and they get together and they just make games on their own. Um, A good example would be, I'm sure some of you have heard of Minecraft. Minecraft was developed by one man. Uh, It's not developed by one man anymore because it's so successful. But he just had an idea. He went ahead and he made it, and it became successful, and it caught on like fire. Braid is another another example of a game that could not exist in the AAA space because its essential conceit is that games are art, and they can tell stories uh, in ways that... Uh, they don't dare to do in normal entertainment. Um, Super Better is an, another example of a game. Uh, if any of you have heard of Jane McGonigal, uh, where she will take positive things, like I was talking about with We Fit, um, that game layer that goes on top of our lives, and making that into an actual game where you can improve your life by playing this game. Uh, games that tap into uh, uh, dying genres or classic genres, like La Mulana. And of course, I have to put up here my favorite farming simulator because. Uh, as much as we laugh, like, it fills a niche, it serves an audience, and that audience would not be there if we had to depend on executives and corporations to put together that stuff for us. Um, so really, it's up to us to go and make those things. And how do we do that? Well, the tools are, are getting more and more easy to use uh, because you have collective velocity on one side with the game industry that's ballooning in budgets and technology, and they have thousands of people that they have to teach how to use these tools. But on the plus side... 
those tools are becoming easier and easier to use for the individuals. So the same way you had the home video revolution and you had independent filmmakers rise, in games you were having the same thing. Uh, you can use the Unreal uh, uh, Development Kit, for example, and that is the exact toolkit that they use to make games like Gears of War and Unreal Tournament. And you can have that in your home, and on your own you can make a game. Uh, tools like Unity and Game Maker, they enable you to do these things. And not only is it easier now to and make games with tools, but there's more options to fund your game as well. Um, originally, you have to go to an investor and you have to talk to them about, uh, you know, get it, about supporting your project and your vision. And nowadays, you, instead of going to one person and asking them for a large sum of money, you can go to multiple people and ask them for multiple, uh, like little small sums of money. If they believe in your project, they can help fund you. I'm sure you've heard of Indiegogo, Kickstarter, uh, things like that. And, uh, and also, we can just take the initiative on our own. No one says games have to be a job. Uh, games can be something that you do on your own. I used to make games on my own when I was a kid just for fun, and I used to send them to my friends on floppy disks, and they'd put them in, if you guys, any of you guys still remember those, and they'd put them in, and we'd share them, we'd bring them to school, and we just have fun with it. Um, so basically what I'm getting at is uh, the games industry is fine. Games are great. They're wonderful, but they're only missing one thing, and that one thing, wait for it, is you. So... Get in there and put your voice to your games. If you're tired of seeing you know, middle-aged, bald, white guys on the cover of every single game, then get in there, start doing something, make your game, uh, and do something special. If you want to educate with your game, if you want to touch lives with your game, you can do that. Uh, the power is yours. And I think that really, if we put our minds to it, then games, the same way movies and books, and perhaps in a way that movies and books can't even replicate because we have the advantage of play, that they can really take us to new heights. Thank you. <laughs>